One, two, one, two, one, two. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Landon Stadium for an Easter Sunday special between New South Wales football's two most successful clubs, Blacktown City hosting Sydney United 58. Keep going, keep going, keep going. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Amazing, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that's full time. You have a 20s ball. Blacktown City 2 defeated United 58 FC 1. 
Goal scorers today for Blacktown City and Cooper Prasad and Team Atheon. Was City United's goal scored by Andre Scott. Full time in the 20s. Blacktown City 2 have defeated City United 58 FC 1.
make their way out to today's starting lineups are as follows. Versus the visiting side, Sydney United, 58 FC goals, number one, Oliver Kadach. Number three, Bailey Rule. Number four, skipper, Adrian Vlasilitsa. Number five, Anthony Tolmich. Number six, number eight, Shunta Nakamura. Number nine, Patrick Antelmi. Number ten, Carlos de Oliveira. Number eleven, Matthew Hatch. Number fourteen, Lee McGing. Number fifteen, Tarek Mayer. Number nineteen, Aiden Milicevic. On the bench, for City United, fifty-eight, number six, Adam Zervas. Number seven, Jordan Ivancic. Number thirteen, Alessandro Lacalandra. Number seventeen, Matthew Nikolovsky. Number twenty-one, Dejan Bakadanikovsky. Number twenty-two, Stefan de Robillard. That goes by Oliver Kalach. And we'll get through the Blacktown lineup once the players make their way out onto the end of the stadium. Good afternoon everybody, welcome to Landed Stadium for an Easter Sunday special between New South Wales football's two most successful clubs, Blacktown City versus Sydney United 58 in a clash that may well dictate who's pursuing silverware this season and who's scrapping to seal a spot in the top six. Alex Molchanoff along with you for all the action this afternoon on a steaming hot day in Sydney's West. Let's take you straight to the team news. Just the one change for the host Blacktown City and Mark Crittenden after their 2-0 win over St George City last weekend. And it's an enforced one with Mario Chabal being sent off late in that game. They start as follows. In goal, number one, Tristan Prendergast. The back four of number 12, TJ Burney. Number 16, Ben Berry. Number four, Lachlan Campbell. And number five, Grant Lynch, who comes into the side today. A midfield four as well. Number eight, Jack O'Brien on the right, wearing number eight. Number six, Adam Berry. Number 18, Nick O'Brien through the middle, partnering him. And number 17, Marty Fernandez with a front two of number seven, Travis Major. And number 23, Joey Gibbs. For Sydney United, 58, three wins on the trot for them, and that means no changes for Selko Kalats after their 1-0 win over Sutherland last weekend. In goal again, number one, Oliver Kalats, who started every game since he's moved to the club at the start of the year. A back four of number three, Bailey Rule, who scored one of the goals of the season last weekend. Number 14, Liam McGing. Number four, Adrian Vlastelitz for the captain. And number 11, Matt Hatch, who's found a fine run of form over the last month. A midfield four for them as well. Off the right, number 19, Aidan Milicevic. Number five, Matt, uh, Anthony Tomilic, rather, through the middle with number 15, Tarek Meyer. And number 10, Carlos de Oliveira, who returns to his old club for the first time since making the move further south. A front two as well, number nine, Patrick Antilmi, a former charge here at Blacktown City as well. And number eight, Shunta Nakamura. So from everyone here at Blacktown City, our condolences to the Berry family. You are always in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. So here we go. About to get underway. Jake Rose is our referee. Holding the ball in the middle. And Sydney United 58 to kick off from right to left this afternoon in their all-white away strip against the all-black of their hosts, Blacktown City. Should be a good one. We'll keep you updated with the concurrent fixture at Rockdale between Rockdale Illidan and Spirit FC as we get along through the afternoon. But it is firmly fixed. Our attention on this one in front of us, a clash which always brings back memories of the mid-2010s when both teams were perennial contenders for silverware. There's a Waratah Cup final in 2015, which, of course, Blacktown City were vanquished in by Sydney United 58, who've got such a proud record in that competition over the last few seasons particularly, but Blacktown got their revenge a year later. 
Winning a, a championship and an Australia Cup title within the space of a couple of weeks. That was really the height of the rivalry between these two. I haven't got a traditional one, but such as the strength of both of them. But it has developed into a fixture with quite a bit of feeling over the past 10 years or so. It's always one that has implications up the table. There's no difference in that vein this afternoon. Both teams starting the season with mixed results. Both certainly hoping to be higher up the table than they sit coming into this afternoon. Blacktown City in fifth place. Sydney United 58 after a, a slow start by their standards, sitting in seventh. As we should have expected that with quite a bit of turnover at the club, not least with Selko Kalitz coming in to replace Miro Vlastoletsa. Ball's been lobbed in. Blacktown City having the better of the very early stages here. Marty Fernandez, who's become a prominent part of this side since making the move from Marconi in the off-season. I played it wide to the futsal rue. Grant Lynch goes into that challenge with Bailey Rule. Wins his side the throw. A little bit of new versus old in that little battle, which we'll keep an eye on down the far side of the pitch all afternoon. Lynch has been in and out of the team at the start of this season, such has been the form of Nick O'Brien, who's been moved into midfield today in the absence of Chabot. Carlos de Oliveira having his first touch at the back at the ground, which he frequented all through his junior years and into his first few years in first grade. Quite a bit of that soured a little by injury. Certainly showed so much promise when he first came up into Mark Crittenden's starting team. A couple of boos rang out when uh, our grand announcer Will Gotsis read his name out on the Sydney United team sheet this afternoon. So there's a couple who haven't forgiven him quite yet. Has been an ever-present Moving over to Sydney United 58 and one of the standouts in their early season. Ben Berry partnering Lachlan Campbell on the heart of defence again today. Bit of change from Mark Crittenden going into this season. So long had been a, a back three that he'd deployed, including in that championship winning season of 2022. Moves to the back four has given them a little bit more thrust going forward. So it's something they lacked early last season. Certainly the continuation of Jack O'Brien's goal-scoring form. They finished second in the Golden Boot race last year. has been a, a welcome sight for those here at Landon Stadium. Anthony Tomalich stepping in. Took him a little while to break into Zelko Kalatz's first 11, but he started all three of those three straight wins. And Matt Hatch has been a revelation getting forward from left back since he's moved there. Over the past month or so. Shunta Nakamura turning and shooting. First one of those we've seen from either side today. Nakamura, another one who's been ever present in Sydney United starting 11 so far this season after making the move from Mount Druid Town Rangers in the off season. Travis Major drifting out to the left, something he so loves to do. Find himself in a little bit more space, certainly with Joey Gibbs back partnering him through the middle of attack. This year has given him a little bit more scope to roam. Gibbs is off to a decent start this season with a couple of goals to his name as well. And Grant Lynch is stretching his legs to get forward. He's beaten rule to this one. Weren't too many options inside him. And a battle that's been played out plenty of times down the years. Adrian Vlastelitz getting there in front of Travis Major. Broke the all-time Blacktown City goal-scoring record a couple of seasons ago, and he's just kicked on since then. Scored his 116th goal for the club last se last weekend. And that 2-0 win over St George City. TJ Burney ducking inside, looking up with Nick O'Brien, Adam Berry, a couple of pairs of brothers. In the starting lineup for Blacktown City. Berries and the O'Briens. Lynch looking to deliver from a deep area. That's catching practice for Oliver Kalatz. Son of the coach, Zelko, of course. And without wanting to venture into cliche, there's been a, an opening 
five minutes or so in which both teams have just been happy to fill each other out. Sydney United 58, as they've seemed to be over the past few seasons, one of the most ball-dominant teams in the competition, but they're not going to be given that freedom this afternoon against Blacktown City. who like to hold on to it plenty themselves. And it's they who are creating probably the more decent attacks of the early stages of this one. Adam Berry with a ball that just took Major back towards his own goal. Nice little underlapping run from Marty Fernandez. What can he deliver? Only found the head of Vlastelitsa. Shunta Nakamura getting back to do some defending. Can Blacktown City keep it in and around the edge of their opposition box? Well, it's turned over by Campbell. Gone into the 50-50. Just a scrappy start to this one. Nice bit of work from Patrick Antelme. He's got a good goal-scoring record against his old club. Got the goal in Sydney United's 1-0 win. At the Sydney United Sports Centre in the first of the two fixtures between these two last season. That's a poor turnover from Milicevic, who's had a good start to life at Sydney United. But making a rare error there. Now there's space for Jack O'Brien to stretch his legs. Game's starting to open up. Flasterlitzer once again positioning himself to perfection. Making sure the cross was shut off before it reached a player in black. Mentioned in the pre-game that heat will be a factor this afternoon. The drinks breaks were taken in both halves of the 20s fixture that preceded this one this afternoon. Blacktown City running out 2-1 winners in that game. I think we can expect to see them in both halves of this one as well. And that means neither team, not that it's really the want for either, will be pressing too high this afternoon. Although Sydney United are keen to force Prendergast into a long ball. Reached Bernie. Eventually got to Gibbs. Now Jack O'Brien, part of that fluid front four, which Mark Crittenden has relied on in the early stages of this season. Fernandez has always got a trick or a flick to show off. Just picks off a picks out a more patient ball square this time. Majors ball into the area. Beginning stooping to clear. Adam Berry might look to line up here. He can strike a football. Man who had trials at the likes of Leeds United in his younger years. Part of the Central Coast Mariners set up in the early 2010s. Didn't catch that one quite as he would have liked. All of the Kalites has had to be aware, if not spectacular so far. Sydney United's turn to try and play out, but Vlastelitsa, who's usually such a good player of the football, turns that one over. It's the hosts who are just swinging the pendulum their way in the early stages of this one. It's Ben Berry. To his 21st year of life, and really his second as one of the keystones of Blacktown City's defence. Finding his brother Adam. Tomalich having to get back and sweep up. Blacktown City just pro prompting and probing their opposition in the early stages of this one. Quick update from Rockdale. There's been a bit of action there in the early stages. 1-1 one, one already. Just 15 minutes into that game between Illenden and the Northwest Sydney Spirit. Tyron Burney looking to beat his opposite fullback. He did that, and then De Oliveira dived into the challenge and brought him down right on the edge of the area. Wing is always asked to do plenty of defending when Tyron Burney is around. Certainly an athlete of the highest quality and one who's got a big engine to get up and down that right flank. Plenty of technical quality to go with all that as well. That adventurous run. That's when he sides a promising free kick here. Right on the stroke of 10 minutes. Jack O'Brien entrusted to take it. Two-man wall for Oliver Kalatz. Plenty of black shirts forward here as well. Every single Sydney United player back inside their defensive penalty box. Olicevic peeling away now. Expecting O'Brien to whip one in deep. Which is exactly what he does. And it was well angled as well. 
Ben Berry getting his head on the football. Just couldn't steer it on target. Blacktown continuing to peppering their opposite to pepper their opposition's goal. But haven't forced Kalats into a meaningful save just yet. Watching the mixed form of these two. Sydney United 58 particularly. In the early season, dropping games that they wouldn't have expected to. Not least that 6-0 loss against Olympic at the end of last month. But they're unbeaten since then. And really the quality of their performances has taken a, a step up in level. Zonka Kalats wasn't happy with the second half of their game last weekend against the Sutherland Sharks. Which they were defending the lead given to them by Bailey Rule's early strike. But it's the results that they've been looking for and certainly three straight victories at any time in this topsy-turvy NPL New South Wales men's competition is an achievement. Looking to keep that good run of form going. Ahead of a, a little bit of a trickier run of games in the next month or so. Get to that in a second. And tell me, ducking inside to another former Blacktown player, Oliveira, De Oliveira just slipping at the crucial moment to... Some Bronx cheers. And now a chance for Blacktown City to try and break forward through Marty Fernandez. Got his head up. Needed a bit more purchase on that one to try and pick out Major, which was his intention. Not able to carry it out. So Matt Hatch carrying it forward for United. Looking to link up with Tarek Meyer. Couldn't pick him out. Bernie winning the foot race. But uh, being penned into his own half. And it's come back to Tarek Meyer. Match for Di Oliveira. First real sustained spell of possession in their opposition's half that Sydney United have managed so far this afternoon. Certainly one of the things Elko Kalitz was worried about in the second half was the lack of progressive passes his team were playing. Spent the majority of that second 45 minutes up at the edge of his technical, technical area, urging them to move the ball more quickly forwards. Sutherland's... Had a very good period of the match in the last 20 minutes in which they threatened to find an equaliser. Had a bit of a rougher week this time around. Falling 7-0 yesterday at home to the roaming Premier's RPL Icart. Certainly some uh, sorting out to do for Stephen Zorich down at Seymour Shore at the moment. Hopeful crossfield ball by Fernandez, who gives it away not for the first time this, this afternoon. Rather more fruitful ball forward from Flasterlitzer, but Tomalic just lobbed it back to his opposition. So Marty Fernandez will get a second bite at the cherry coming off the right. He's been flicking from both flanks early in this game. Barry and Fernandez playing a little two man game. Nakamura's gone over on what looked to be a bit of a rolled ankle. Patient build-up in the early stages from Blacktown City so far. Nick O'Brien. It's for Blacktown City, that was a much-needed win. Away at Penshurst Park last week, it was a fractious game which had plenty of flash points across the 90 minutes. They'll be looking for something a little bit calmer this afternoon. Bernie's looking to give them something to attack. It gave Tomalich something to think about and he can only put it behind for a Blacktown City corner. In fact, it was McGing back there doing the defending. Second corner of these early stages for City. Chabelle's red card, which will see him out for a couple of weeks because of the nature of it. Coming on the back of a, a bit of a fracas started by Matthew Karamalewski of City, who was all, also sent off. City ended that game with not St. George City ended that game with nine players. His major. He's looking to play peacekeeper last weekend. He's looking to play creator this afternoon. Gibbs trying to keep it in play couldn't do so flag goes up on the near side from Amir Hossein Hosnani 
was right on the spot to see it just creep its way over the byline. Out of play for a Sydney United goal kick. City returning home after those two straight wins, but it's the last time out here which saw them fall 1-0 to the Wollongong Wolves in a bit of a surprise. Not that the Wolves have been anything other than difficult opponents so far this season. Did sit atop the table for a moment a couple of weeks ago. Wolves tailed off a little bit, losing 4-3 in a, a dramatic clash yesterday. At Belmore against Sydney Olympic, Roy O'Donovan. 39 years young, finding the stoppage time winner there. Fernandez, who's been integral to getting Blackdown City up the pitch so far in this one. Finds Major and Bernie and off the post from Jack O'Brien. Blacktown City that close to taking the lead. Kalatz was frozen like a statue on his line. Major with another go at it. And this time put behind by Bailey Rule. The pressure starting to mount on the visitors' defence. Have not been able to establish a foothold in this game to this point. And they were nearly punished on the scoreboard there. Jack O'Brien with six goals already this season on the back of what was such a fruitful campaign for him last time out, scoring 17. on pace in the early season to have another career best goal return would have loved to see that hit the back of the net that one's curling towards Kalatz who read it very well tricky ones for goalkeepers those which they have it to retreat and grasp over their heads Kalatz did it very nicely there distribution didn't find anyone in white though Joey Gibbs is actually going to be flagged for offside here. Came from a, a long way back. He's not overly impressed with the decision. Sydney United looking for something to turn the tide. Aiden Milicevic's run down the right might give them something here. Already was looking to beat Prendergast, who had to get his fingertips to it. It might have been heading into that far corner. And suddenly the action, which was slow in starting, I don't think I'm being unfair in saying, has sprung to life a little bit here at Landon Stadium. Blacktown City just uh, losing their focus at the back for a moment there, nearly allowing this very dangerous front line of Sydney United in. And it's been an in-form front line as well. A team that struggled for goals last year and early in the season are looking a lot more free-flowing. And Antelmi's there, and he struck the post. De Oliveira on his return to Landon has the simplest goal he'll ever score. Two chances in two minutes. And the second one is taken by the visitors who take the lead against the run of play. It won't be a goal that pleases the fans here, but it's a very happy return for Carlos de Oliveira. Set up by that man who Blacktown City must be sick of the sight of. In red, white and blue, Patrick Antelmi. It was his run in behind that caused the issue. Struck the post and with no one near him, Carlos de Oliveira just had to tap it into an empty net. And Blacktown City's early... Territorial dominance counts for little. They've got a game to chase here on Easter Sunday. Well, I'd be looking to do that. Gibbs has snuck off the offside trap. Can he get there? Lunging in at the perfect moment was McGing. And referee Jake Rose says he didn't even get a touch. It was just his presence, presence that put Joey Gibbs off. Goodness me, what a last five minutes we've had here. Chances going begging for Blacktown. A very good save made by Prendergast and then a goal scored by Carlos de Oliveira. Can't take your eyes off this one at the moment. Bailey Rule getting forward from right fullback now. 
Ben Berry in the way, but he just returns it from whence it came. Sydney United buoyed by their early goal. Second weekend in a row, they've got one of those. And Maya cleverly getting his body in the way to draw the attention of Nick O'Brien and the free kick. Well, it was both the home teams who got the wins in these fixtures last season. Blacktown City running out 3-1 winners. But the season before that, and it must be said, they did have to come from behind that day as well. Carlos de Oliveira actually on the score sheet in black in that game last season. It's a fixture he's growing to enjoy whatever colours he's wearing. But the season before that, it was the away teams who did the double. Seemed to be unpredictable every time between these two. As that one's flicked in. Gibbs was trying something inventive with a back heel. I'll tell you what, the turn from Antelmi wasn't half bad. Can he find Nakamura? Ben Berry read it beautifully. Milicevic taking up the attack. Just flicking it around Lynch. Berry across to cover. But there's space through the middle now for Tomalic. And De Oliveira. Didn't have the greatest start, but he's looking for his second. Stung the palms of Prendergast, and Nakamura could only fire it into him again. He was offside in any case, but Blacktown City, there must be inquests into what's happening at the back in the last five minutes. Patrick Antelmi having a field day in front of that back four, and he nearly just created another goal. Carlos de Oliveira now feeling as though he has a pass to shoot on sight. And the usually short-handed Prendergast, I think, might have felt that he could have held that strike as well. Just all looking a little bit unsure for the team that started this game so assuredly. Grant Litch firm in the challenge. That's what they need at the moment. Blacktown City a little bit of a commitment and sure-footedness it's deserted them in the last five minutes or so since the Oliveira's goal, which gives them the lead as we stop for drinks. Patrick Antelmi stinging the palms of, Prend of the, well, stinging the post rather from the palms of Tristan Prendergast before the Oliveira walked the ball into an empty net. That's the goal that gives Sydney United the lead at Landon Stadium on 23 minutes. Alex Molchanoff with you on the Football New South Wales YouTube page this afternoon. Delighted to be taking you through this one wherever around the world you are watching. A reminder, during the week, you can find all the latest news, previews, reviews, and all the content from our talented social media team at NPL. New South Wales on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Whichever is your choice of social media, you'll be able to find us there. Find all the highlights from the games over the weekend in the NPL New South Wales men's and women's competitions as well. Update from the Illenden Sports Centre. Still 1-1. After just over half an hour. And kicking off a little ahead of us here this afternoon. An update on the league table after all the results last night. Western Sydney Wanderers 4-2 win over St George FC where they had to come from behind twice. Keeps them top of the early season table ahead of the Marconi Stallions who were also 2-0 winners last night over the Central Coast Mariners at the Palace. Happy like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast. 7-0 winners over the Sutherland Sharks sitting in third place at the moment. Rockdale in action in fourth ahead of Blacktown City. Who trail early here. Thanks to their former player, Carlos de Oliveira's goal. Other result last night, Hills United getting a win here over Manly United 2-1. Their third win of the campaign, which has got them with eyes on the top half of the table. Which I don't know how many people expected that at the start of the season for the newly promoted side. They've made a, a good go of it. In their early life, their first foray into the top division of New South Wales football. 
Grant Lynch linking up with Nick O'Brien, looking to strike back here, Blacktown. Off to the drinks break. McGing just flicking it clear. De Oliveira, who started this game a little shaky, is looking full of confidence now. Why wouldn't he? Such a talented player. Oh, he was a little over-enthused there as he tried to win the ball back off Ben Berry. Clash they would have had a few times in training, I would have thought, over the past few seasons. That one put more agriculturally into touch, but a, an attacking throw from which Blacktown City can base themselves here. Gibbs knocking it back for Lynch. And now Nick O'Brien. He's got such a crafty right foot. Who can he pick out, Major, who is offside? A little bit disappointed with himself there, Travis Major. Had a good look along the line of Sydney United's defence. Might have held his run. And he had his time over. With this 1-0 lead now, Sydney United 58 can be a little bit more circumspect. Not that they weren't being that already. Certainly hadn't come out in a high press, but we're being proactive enough without the football. Certainly looking a lot more confident on it since the Oliveira's opener. Patrick Antelmi's been right at the heart of everything positive they've done going forward. That's why he's suspension. That opening game of the season against the Central Coast Mariners, which I think Coach Callites thought was all rather unnecessary. It's felt badly. It's been no surprise that his return to the starting 11 has coincided with an uptick in form. Bailey rules life at Sydney United 58 in the heart of their team. So much because of his willingness and ability going forward. Wasn't able to keep that ball in play. Did get, off, get, did get his uh, tally going in the league last weekend. Scored a couple of goals in the cup last season for Sydney United 58. But it was his first goal in the top flight of MPL New South Wales competition. Was one worth waiting for it. A peach of a volley. She flew past Nenad Vekic and gave the Sutherland goalkeeper no chance. Won't be looking to rely on his goals this season, but they're a, a welcome addition when they do come. Blacktown are now going to have the challenge of breaking down what is a, a well-disciplined Sydney United 58 defence. It wasn't always that last season, but uh, already this year has looked rather more sturdy with McGing alongside Vlastolica consistently. And to that, Bailey Rules... Real locking down of that right fullback position. And Matt Hatch has been deployed as a left back by Zelko Kalatz. Used to seeing him a lot higher up for Marconi last season. And with the Central Coast Mariners in his academy years. But he's shown an adeptness in that left fullback position so far. And he's got on the score sheets a couple of times as well. So Kalatz giving his fullbacks plenty of license to get forwards. We'll see them do that again here now through Hatch. Facing up with his opposite fullback, Bernie. Linking up with De Oliveira. And he's managed to work his sides. Another corner kick. In fact, that's their first of the afternoon. A slow start for Sydney United 58 this afternoon has turned into a very promising first half. Milicevic lining up and striking the crossbar. Prendergast was beaten. Superb effort from Milicevic. Who was inches away from doubling their lead. It's almost a stunned silence at Landon Stadium at the moment. A team that started so brightly at suddenly being put right under the pump. Milicevic has broken his duck for his new club. He's inches away from getting his second. Now there's a chance down the other end. Beautifully timed challenge from Hatch. Had to be. Jack O'Brien. For Fernandez. And now Bernie. Berry. Well, that's a good ball. Gibbs was completely unmarked. And he took an air swing. 
And now a chance for Sydney United to break. They've been quite keen to get forward quickly with the football this afternoon. Quite in contrast to their performance last weekend. Nakamura. Running at Campbell. Easier said to get past him than done. Now Sydney United just happy to keep possession. This has been the trend of the game. Better in transition and looking increasingly assured on the ball. Just as I say that, of course, Bailey Rule plays it straight out of play. But Mark Crittenden has his arms in the air. I'm not sure whether towards the referee, Jake Rose, or his team at the moment. There's question marks from a few weeks ago for Sydney United 58. Uh, falling further and further away. With every minute, their performance again this afternoon has been sparkling so far. Maya. Just looking to angle that ball. It's always difficult to play those balls almost vertically with players running inside. Have to measure them to perfection. Tarek Maya was quite a way off doing that then. Told you to just keep an eye on what City United are doing without the ball. And certainly they were uh, happy to engage Blacktown City a lot higher. And the score was still deadlocked. Oh, and they might have found a way through here. Jack O'Brien's off the shoulder. Gibbs just has to keep his head. And he's put it the wrong side of the post. That's a couple of chances now for Joey Gibbs. And that one certainly was one he would have expected himself to score. All the time he could have asked for. Right on top of the penalty spot. Another couple of inches left. And Blacktown might have had the equaliser they so desire. Suddenly it's Sydney United's turn just to completely switch off at the back. This is turning into a wild one in Sydney's West. Oh, and De Oliveira. Suddenly his... Nervy start just shakes back into his boots for a moment. Fernandez for Adamberry. He's popped up on the left this time. What can he measure? Gibbs. And O'Brien certainly didn't catch that as he was looking to. Blacktown City got to be so careful in transition. This is the one thing going 4 4 2. The rest of defense suffers a little, but Nick O'Brien did a very good job of recovering. Now he's allowed to turn through midfield. Isn't he growing into some sort of player? Nick O'Brien. A Swiss Army knife for Mark Crittenden. Able to start in both fullback positions and certainly a depth through midfield. All his good work undone by that pass there, though. Nakamura for Maya. Now Hatch. He and the Oliveira have stuck up a beautiful understanding down the left. It might bear fruits here again. And tell me, wrestling with defenders and his mischievous nature has won his side another corner. Always loves coming back to Blacktown City, Patrick Anselmi, where he had so much success. He's carried that over to Sydney United 58. Scored goals wherever he's been. For a decade now at this level of New South Wales football. He's calling his teammates in to crowd around Tristan Prendergast and give him a real headache here. Maya firing all the over all their heads, making the job rather easy for the Blacktown City captain. Nice piece of distribution too. And a lovely touch from Jack O'Brien to bring it down. He's scythed down by Carlos de Oliveira. He's had a couple of those now. I think that will be his final chance to go without a booking. Haven't seen one of those yet from referee Jake Rose this afternoon. Just a point separating these two teams coming into the afternoon. Sydney United would move above Blacktown City. In fact, they make quite a jump. Could go all the way up to third should the result at Rockdale go their way as well with a win this afternoon. Blacktown City trying to ensure that doesn't happen with just about 10 minutes to go till half time. Nice ball whipped in and Major again has found himself offside. 
Again, having a good look across the line as well. Just going to halt that enthusiasm to get in behind the defence. This is the start of a little bit of a tougher run for Sydney United 58. Trip here and then away at Apia Leichhardt next weekend. They actually managed to win last season. One of the few teams to do so. Oh, and now Jack O'Brien going down under the challenge of Hatch. And a dive being ruled by Jake Rose. Jack O'Brien cannot believe it. And that is going to just up the ante in terms of the response coming from the supporters here at Landon Stadium. We'll be none too pleased with that decision. Had a very good view, did referee Rose? The first booking of the afternoon. Goes to maybe a little unlucky Jack O'Brien there. Blacktown certainly have looked a lot better since that stoppage for the drinks break. Brian drifting in off the right again to his opposite winger. Travis Major belts the ball into Bailey Rule. Deflects behind for a Blacktown City corner. Certainly looking more likely to claim what will be a... a a very important second goal in this game. If they can nick it before half time, and just set them up nicely going into the second 45 minutes. Certainly, their play with the ball has been much improved in the last 10 minutes or so. Adam Berry spinning that one up in the air, not with enough whip. Easy clearance for Vlastelitsa. Bernie to try and fire it back in. Didn't get the whip he was looking for on it either. Callat's hardly had to move in making the catch. And Tommy allowed to turn. Maya. Hatch is going to have to do very well to keep that one in play. Just asked a little too much of him. Well, it's uh, asking for the handball and getting it. Joey Gibbs... Was inadvertent, but certainly helped him in controlling the football. Mentioned how badly the equaliser before half time would suit Blacktown City. By quite contrast, if they were to cop a second, really would. I mean, they were climbing Everest in the second half, particularly in the heat. Must be said, though, that Sydney United 58 didn't particularly deal with that well last weekend in the second half of their clash with the Sutherland Sharks. Certainly the changes that Zelko Kalatz made probably were the telling factor in holding on to that 1-0 lead. Maya bending that one in. Nakamura, always lively up there, but couldn't bring that ball under his spell. Fernandez striding clear. This time Major able to hold his run as he needed to. Good vision to pick out Adam Berry as well. He's getting into a scrap with his old midfield partner, De Oliveira. Releases Tyron Burney. Those black shirts in there are plenty. Can he pick one out? McGinn got his head to the ball initially. And then Milicevic and Nakamura scrap it clear between them. And then Patrick Antelme coming from a very... Deep offside position to get involved in that play. Sydney United not particularly pleased with the position from which that free kick was taken. Got another attack to defend here. It's a, an adventurous ball in from Adam Berry and it drew a touch off a Sydney United defender. So another Blacktown City corner. Just under five minutes of regular time remaining in this first half. Ben Berry forward again. He's the 
target most often from this sort of set piece situation. Campbell's got a goal in him as well. It was Berry's, well, I'll say hip into Kalatz, which has drawn the whistle and the free kick. Danger averted for now for Sydney United 58. Just looking to get to half time with this 1 0 lead given to them by Carlos de Oliveira. Right on 20 minutes. It's first game back at Blacktown City since making the move further south in the off season. Space for Matt Hatch to run into here. Needed to wait that to perfection and probably just a yard short. Adam Berry getting back to clean up. Weisterlitz had to wait for that one. A little awkward for him. Oh, and that's even more awkward. Back to him from Hatch. It's going to end up with a Sydney United throw, though. So all's well that uh, ends well. Mentioned that cup final back in 2015, right at the top of the broadcast. We actually had the first round of matches for the Cup drawn this week for the NPL New South Wales sides. A couple of preliminary rounds have already gone. They enter the competition in the fourth round. Some interesting ones to talk you through there, but Patrick Antelmi's work on the ball is a little more relevant at the moment. Managing to break the lines again and draw a, another challenge from Ben Berry, which has led to a free kick. Usually boisterous crowd here at Landon Stadium have been extremely quiet in this first half. Joey Gibbs has missed a couple of good chances. Most nervy here because there's a chance for Sydney United to try and double their advantage. Meyer's ball in is too deep really for Flastolitz who did well to get anything on it. Let alone try and steal it, steer it towards goal. City fans happy to see it trickle behind for a goal kick. So Blacktown City with an interesting draw. Mentioned their win last weekend against St. George City. They'll meet them again in midweek. Not this week, but the week after. Still waiting for the exact times and dates of those games to come out. But it'll be a midweek fixture for them at home. Marty Fernandez steaming forward. Jack O'Brien gets the equaliser. He's been drifting into increasingly dangerous areas as his first half has worn on. And when the chance fell his way, he wasn't about to let it go. Passes it into the corner. A finish of a player in fine form at the moment. And for Blacktown City's pressure and possession as his first half has worn on, it's nothing less than they deserved. Once again, just drifting in off the right, O'Brien. And it was a picture-perfect finish. Had to beat to beat Kalatz, to be fair. He was well-positioned, but he couldn't get his fingertips to that one. And Sydney United's lead lasted just over 20 minutes. They've been pulled back before the break. And how that changes the complexion of this game. A game that had to be chased at one point. We're used to wild and woolly fixtures between these two. The football's been of a high quality. Now the drama looks as though it might be going some way to match it. As Hatch got forward again. Be something if Blacktown could uh, nick a second before the break here. But Sydney United will have that same thought. We're searching rather aggressively for a second, even before they were pegged back. That impetus will only rise a little higher. Both teams really coming forward and trying to play in the heat, which has been good for us, the neutral, so far on this Easter Sunday. Hoped it might be a special. It's certainly tracking that way at the moment. Two. Two minutes being signalled by the fourth official, Nicholas Kaur, to be added on to the end of what's been a very entertaining first half. 
Major looking to just roll rule. That's the support of Marty Fernandez, who's left one for dead. And needed to hit that one with a little bit more mustard. Kalat's able to get in behind it rather easy, easily. It was the first half that started slowly. It certainly hasn't progressed that way. Berry Brothers playing a little one-two between themselves. Now for Nick O'Brien. It's really been the party starter today from the heart of midfield. Some of the most impressive ball players in the competition. A, a nice thing for Mark Crittenden to have at the heart of his midfield. Bernie... One of the most adventurous fullbacks. Looking for a striker in black. It's found its way all the way to Travis Major on the left. Look to get a shot away. Always rising. But just when you see him roll inside on his right foot, you expect to see something challenging the goalkeeper. Had Kalatz's eyes lit up, but didn't force him into a save on that occasion. Mentioned that game here towards the end of last season in which Blacktown City trailed, actually trailed at the break that time around. This time they managed to find an equaliser before half time. The first for Sydney United 58. Carlos de Oliveira on his return to Landon Stadium, drifting into an unmarked position to strike home the rebound from Patrick Antelmi's strike, with, which hit the post. But Blacktown City. Fired back with a good period towards the end of the first half and got their rewards just before the break through Jack O'Brien with his seventh of the season already. Puts him level on top of the goal scorers charts in 2024 across the competition. And so as it sits at the break, we're all square. Blacktown City 1, Sydney United 58-1.
principal partner, Walker Corporation, Landon Homes, Memento Hospitality, Sinorama Blacktown, Blacktown Council, Retriever Towing, Blacktown Workers, Set AB, Connex, MST Financial, Event Projects, Equal Development, Philo, Boys in the Box, Denta Vision, Exotic Nurseries, Sydney Toll Gallery, Access Fire. Welcome back to Landed Stadium. The second half of this Easter Sunday clash between Blacktown City and Sydney United 58. The visitors took the lead through the returning Carlos de Oliveira and one of the simpler goals he'll ever score. Walking the ball into an empty net after Patrick Antelby had hit the post. His third goal for Sydney United 58 since making the switch over. An equaliser late in the first half through Jack O'Brien. His seventh of the season. For the home side, has got us on level terms as we kick off the second 45 minutes here at London Stadium. Alex Molchanoff along with you for all the action from this one. It was an entertaining first half. If that was anything to go by, we've got something in store for you in the second. So don't touch that device that you're watching us on this afternoon. And it is a pleasure to have your company on this Sunday afternoon. Whenever you're watching around the world via the Football New South Wales YouTube channel. Both teams looking to thrust themselves up the table. A big opportunity for both this afternoon to do that. Patrick Antelmi looking to get on the end of that early cross from Matt Hatch. Just couldn't bring it under his spell at the crucial moment. A couple of good chances for Blacktown City went begging. But it could be Sydney United who are looking to strike Nakamura! Stunning strike with his left foot. Prendergast got a hand to it but couldn't keep it out. And less than a minute into the second half, the visitors have got the lead back. Shunta Nakamura's third goal of the season and Sydney United's free-flowing scoring in the last month has continued early in the second half here. A loose touch of the back for Blacktown City and Mark Crittenden cannot believe it. I've been a little loose at the back so far this afternoon. And Sydney United, where the chances have fallen their way, have been deadly in front of goal. City, by contrast, have spurned quite a few opportunities. And it's come back to bite them again here. And once again, they're chasing this game. Update from Rockdale. About an hour into that game now. Illenden have taken the lead back. Game following a similar trajectory to this one. Both have been great watches so far, I'm told, on this Sunday afternoon. Certainly this one has. Swings in momentum to both sides. And Nakamura, who'd not really been... A critical presence across this game has taken the opportunity that befell him. Once again, Blacktown City are going to have to try and break down this set defence of Sydney United 58 on a hot day. Have they got the stamina in the legs? Certainly they've got the different makers, difference makers out there. And on the bench, should Crittenden look to them? Gibbs getting to the byline, lobbing that one up. Oliver Kalatz, who's been called into action fairly consistently over the course of this match so far. Making a, a more simple save there. United again, as they were by that first goal. Boyd. And searching forward once more. Marty Fernandez getting to that one ahead of Bailey Rule, who wanted a free kick that I don't think was ever coming his way. Has won a, fr uh, a throw for his side, though. And tell me. It's 
caused headaches for Blacktown City's defence all afternoon. Finding De Oliveira. Those two have had a nice little link up this afternoon. Hatch coming in off the left. Might look to get a shot away and forcing Prendergast to palm away. Diving to his right and once again there's words for his defence who was slow to react. And tell me he's just toying with them at the moment. He's not found himself on the score sheet yet this afternoon but he's been the telling factor. Certainly up the Sydney United attacking end of the pitch. Once again, they crowd around Prendergast from this situation. The ball's on the money. Major getting there ahead of the white shirts, which were looking to get out to it. The danger not clear until Milicevic played it out of play. Nice turn from O'Brien. Probably been the standout from a Blacktown City perspective this afternoon. On Lynch... With a rare poor touch, and then De Oliveira, who was involved several times in the first half, and that's exactly what referee Jake Rose is indicating, has found himself in the notebook now. First Sydney United player who's had his name taken. And Blacktown City strike back quickly. Certainly that ball gave Jack O'Brien something to chase, but he wasn't able to reel it in. It's watched over the byline by Matthew Hatch. For Sydney United, who've so often found themselves in situations like this over the past 12 months, having to find a second win. They found it this afternoon. Question for them now is can they hold on? Or can they find a third? Certainly, it's on the more intense of the two teams coming out of the break. Tell me the outlet every time they go forward now, Sydney United. Linking up with Nakamura. And now Maya, put under pressure by Nick O'Brien. Finds Rule. And then turned over. Couldn't find Tomalic with the return pass. Fernandez. Left a couple for dead. Trailing in his wake. He's got support up there with him. Jack O'Brien, who's found the score sheet once this afternoon. Looking to turn provider. Bernie's underlapping run. Another ball into the box was looking for Gibbs, who will be thinking about those two chances which fell his way in the first half that he wasn't able to convert. Still time for him to find a goal this afternoon. O'Brien has another go at it. Flastelitza couldn't clear. Rule got there in the nick of time. Nick O'Brien now. And Lynch. Stroke pass rule, floats it up towards the back post. Fernandez was closest to it. Hatches down on his backside in the Sydney United penalty area and Jake Rose stops play. Certainly been nothing wrong with Blacktown's enterprise going forward. It's been their ability to finish off the chances they've created. Which is giving them the most headaches at the moment. And a couple of lapses in concentration at the back that have led to the two goals. Haven't brought you the two benches so far this afternoon, so we'll do that as Matt Hatch is down receiving treatment. I mentioned the attacking options Mark Crittenden has available to him. Mitch Molly has scored one of the goals of the season a couple of weeks ago. He's wearing number 14. His first goal since coming out of retirement to return this season. After winning the grand final in 2022, Ruben Oroatife is there as well. Julian, young Julian Rodriguez yet to make his debut, but certainly one who's highly touted around these parts. Number 22, Jacob Maniti, who's featured prominently off the bench in midfield roles. And number 29, Zach Butler there as well. Number 20, Caden Henderson, the reserve goalkeeper for Crittenden this afternoon. 
for Zalko Kalatz. A couple of players who made a telling impact in their introduction last weekend. Number six, Adam Zervas. Number seven, Jordan Novancic. Number 13, Alessandro Lacalandra. Number 21, Dayan Bakadana Korski. Number 22, Stefan De Robillard, as well as their reserve, goal, reserve goalkeeper. Number 17, Matthew Nikolovsky. And restarts with a drop ball. Blacktown City will resume their raid on the City United goal. Need to find one in another way past Oliver Kalatz. Might come here through Marty Fernandez, who scored a spectacular goal at this ground a few years ago now. When he was playing for the Marconi Stallions. Dribbled through half the team. Tony Tunus, who was on commentary that day. Produced a, a bellowing call. Match the quality of the goal. Fernandez has been a willing runner so far this afternoon, but has not been able to find those little spaces that he loves to operate in quite as much as he probably would have liked to this point. Ten minutes into this second half. You are just joining us. Shunta Nakamura's goal less than a minute into this second half has given Sydney United 58 something to carry into the second 45 minutes Nico Bryan trying to get Blackdown City going forward mentioned Fernandez coming off the left managed to nutmeg Meyer loves to run at defenses loves to find Major in a wide position his ball wasn't the one he wanted but Nico Bryan's been able to keep it in play Lynch arriving Brian, the Blacktown junior, to Adam Berry. Can strike them from that sort of range, but wasn't able to keep that one quite low enough. Kalat's happy to watch it sail over his crossbar. Continuing to create chances, the hosts this afternoon. Still they trail. Campbell with a commanding header at the back. Joey Gibbs. The lead for change of passes with Fernandez. And now Nico Bryan. This is better from Blacktown. Bernie, who was so prominent in the first half down the right, with his first chance to really get at the defence going forward this time. Well timed challenge from De Oliveira. Has to be careful. He's in the notebook of referee Jake Rose already. Adam Berry picking the ball up in a deep area. Gibbs as deep as we've seen him this afternoon. How well was that ball measured perfectly by Jack O'Brien. Gibbs again. That probably the most difficult of the chances that have fallen his way this afternoon. The ball just a little bit behind him. It's going to be difficult to steer that one back on goal. Creating chances down both flanks though the hosts. Oh, and tell me, with a beautiful touch initially, Campbell did well to recover and then draw the shirt pull and the free kick. Blacktown City making the running, looking for this equaliser. and Not Jack O'Brien's best contribution this afternoon, considering he's got himself on the score sheet. That's a high bar. That pass, probably one he'd want back. And some of those substitutes. You can see Mitch Marley limbering up down there. Expect him to be introduced sooner rather than later in this second half. Launched forward again by Kalatz. There was no one in white really in the vicinity. Last Blacktown City to set themselves for another attack. Campbell for Nico Bryan. 
Well, he just skipped past Tomalich like he wasn't there. What's the ball forward got? It's found Fernandez. He's looking to return it to him, and Tomalich did well to recover and clear. Campbell again clashing with Antelmi and winning out this time. Gibbs. Jack O'Brien. Looking for Campbell, who'd continued his run all the way into the opposition penalty area. There was a clash there between Antelmi and... Nick O'Brien, who stayed down. Jake Rose happy for play to continue, though, with Milicevic. More, ball, more black shirts back than there are white shirts forwards. And then Milicevic felt he was taken off the ball. Players falling in twos and threes at the moment. And now referee Rose electing to stop play as he's berated by both sets of players. He felt they should have had a decision each in that little passage. O'Brien's thankfully back to his feet without too much fuss. A bit more for Aidan Milicevic. He certainly felt whatever Lachlan Campbell had for him in back play after he'd released the ball. But there is no free kick for either side at the end of all of that. It's going to be another drop ball. Past the hour mark here at London Stadium. If you are just joining us, Carlos de Oliveira and Shunta Nakamura, the two names on the score sheet for Sydney United 58 this afternoon. They came either side of Jack O'Brien's equaliser just before half time. His seventh of the year is not going to be enough this afternoon, though. Those who've had the better of the play generally today, but finding themselves down on the scoreboard. Largely thanks to this man, Patrick Antelmi. He's been such a handful. Campbell able to corral him that time. Nick O'Brien for his brother, Jack. Bernie looking to join him outside. Eventually plays the ball through. It's well weighted. Skips past Hatch. His favoured left foot to try and deliver. It's fallen to Fernandez. Flashing wide of Kalatz's net again. Pressure continues to build for the host, but a search for it, that second equaliser of the afternoon goes on. Quick comment from the London Sports Centre. Rockdale now leading that game 3 1. Kurusevsky with a brace out there, having an, another field day. The Rockdale Illenden skipper. That means it looks as though Blacktown, the highest they're going to be able to sit this afternoon. It's going to be in fourth place ahead of Arpia Leichhardt, but they find themselves trailing, and that's the position Sydney United currently occupy on the live ladder. Major striding into the area, drawing the challenge from Rule, and the subsequent corner. Score from Needs to produce center. something a little bit better so here, well Blacktown City. Quality from these set pieces hasn't quite been there this afternoon. A little bit of a different tactic going into this one. The crowding around Kalatz. This time that's left to Lynch, and it nearly picked out a player. Big appeals for a penalty. Major thumps it against Vlastalitsa. Adam Berry high into the air. Gibbs is in the right position and managed to work a shot on goal, but it didn't have too much venom behind it. Joey Gibbs coming under close attention as this second half wears on from the Sydney United defence. They're aware of the threat he carries. Back in New South Wales football after three years away in Iceland. He was a promotion winner. It's been a couple of years in the top flight after that promotion as well. And tell me! Inches away from a goal his work so far this afternoon has really deserved. Renegas was unmoved. He wasn't saving it. Had it managed to sneak inside his post. Perhaps we should trust his judgment that he felt it was going wide. Certainly wasn't far away from where we're sitting up here in the stand at London Stadium. Who's currently staring down the barrel of a second straight defeat at home. Coming on the back of two wins on the road as well. And ahead of a 
very busy period in which they'll host both Sydney FC and the Central Coast Mariners here in between a cup game with St George City. So they're not going to have to travel far over the next three weeks, but they'll be looking to pick up results. They just love a boost here. Still they're chasing it. Bernie continuing to get forward in attack down the right. They haven't been able to deal with his threat. Flastelet's having to slide across in cover. That one's going to create a little bit of a burn. You see him having a look down at a couple of scabs that are going to fall there over the next couple of days, no doubt. The present threat is the Danger that Blacktown City can offer from this corner. A little shake of the hips from Fernandez. Wants to get it across. Major. But he's shot blocked by Tarek Meyer. Two experienced campaigners going head to head there. Nick O'Brien. Not his best piece of work. Major made something of it. Again, getting above rule. His own teammate to clear. Well, Major thought he was fouled by Meyer. Referee disagreed. He was right on the spot, Jake Rose. And now a chance for Sydney United to get forward in counter-attack. Hatch always aware of situations where he can get forward. Stepping inside, and his ball to Anselmi. Just a little bit behind him. Thumps the ground in frustration. This really has turned into a very engaging watch as it's worn on. Marty Fernandez now. Major. Drifting out to the left this time. Face to face with Rule. And past him. On the ball in was a dangerous one. Flastel, it's a perfectly positioned. Well, Nakamura with space to run forward, but not too many teammates up with him. So he just turns back and happy to keep possession. The status quo will do for Sydney United 58 with this one goal lead. Maya. Sydney United searching for their fourth straight win and in the position to claim it today. Another poor touch from Gibbs who's just cutting an increasingly frustrated figure up front. Nice switch from Tomalich to find De Oliveira. He's had a fine afternoon on his return to Landon. And now Matt Hutch is in all sorts of space and fires his shot straight at Prendergast who made himself big and blocked the chance. Two goals in his last three games from left fullback Matt Hatch, and he was in a, another dangerous position there. Another couple of goals. And he'll match his return in all of last season for Marconi. Such has been his form getting forward so far this season. Going to have the, our second cooling break of this game. The temperature is still hot out there. Around 29 degrees at kickoff today. Hopefully for the players that has dropped a little in the past hour and a half. But uh, you can see most of them strolling over to those quite glad for the break. So what's coming up for both these teams? I've mentioned them a couple of times. The first thing that's coming up is a, a substitution for... Sydney United 58. It's as though that's the end of the line for Anthony Tomalic. I'll just get confirmation of Substitution that. Substitution for Blacktown City going off number 17, Marty Fernandez. Replacement of 14, Blacktown Blacktown City. And going off for Sydney United 58. Malia, going off number 5, was Anthony Tomalic. Replacement number 13, Alessandro oh, Lacalanda. Right, it was Anthony Tomalic. Being removed by Sydney United 58, Alessandra Lacalandra, who will thrive in the space that's being offered up on the break at the moment for Sydney United 58. I'm sure that's the thinking of Zelko Kalats in sending him on. Still only 19 years of age was a really a, a revelation. His introduction into the team last year by Miro Vlastelica. A couple of goals for them and really having a telling impact in the Waratah Cup final against Apia Leichhardt where he laid on two assists in extra time. The Sydney United ran out 3-1 winners. Mentioned all those clashes between these two in big games through the middle of the 2010s. 
It's been a while since they met at a big game, though. The last was the 2016 Grand Final. It's actually Sydney United 58's last championship. Final in which they beat Blacktown 3-0. Danny Choi, who is up in the stand today, but not in the squad. Getting a double, as well as the man on the ball, scoring in black that day. Can he add another for Sydney United? Spinning and firing on his left foot. That was... Fairly simple to handle for Prendergast in the end. Travis Major was on the team list that day as well. Bring that ball forward for Joey Gibbs who couldn't keep it in. Felt that Blacktown City might just have to grasp the Chances that fell their way a little earlier in the game. Certainly a good period they had just after the break, but pendulum starting to swing back towards their visitors. More than happy with their two with their two one lead. Matt Hatch trying to add to that, and there was a real tangle in the middle. But the free kick's gone Blacktown City's way, and tell me the judge to have affected Campbell more than the other way round. A little let off for Blacktown City. Matt Hatch is having an increased influence as this second half wears on. And certainly with the introduction of Lacalandra down the right now, they've got someone just as willing to explore the space afforded to him down his flank. This man Grant Lynch is going to have plenty on his plate in the final 20 Probably minutes or so of this game. Searching ball forward from Nick O'Brien. Malia with his first touch. It's coming on. Can it be a goal scoring one or an assist? Jack O'Brien! And Joey Gibbs again was right on the mark. He just needed something on that ball to put it home and he couldn't find it. Just confirming a double chase for Sydney United 58. But what a chance again for Joey Gibbs. Beautifully worked by Malia, who managed to shake off the attentions of his man. Beautiful touch from Jack O'Brien to fire the ball across. Was just missing its finishing touch. And still Blacktown search for an equaliser goes on. And Tommy winning his side the free kick this time. And McGing was aware of the space that Carlos de Oliveira was in on the left, but couldn't pick him out. So Tom Lich, we mentioned Michael Andra's introduction. His direct replacement is actually going to be Dayan Bakadanakoski, who's setting up next to Tarek Maya. Give that defence a little bit more protection. Right hand side, it was the end of Hayden Milicevic's day. Struck the crossbar in the first half with a stinging drive. Had Tristan Prendergast beaten. There's been opportunities aplenty in this game. Action aplenty. And it's been played in good spirits as well. Two, game, two teams aware of what the opportunity that this afternoon offers. Said in the pre-game, this might be the defining one. And who's searching for silverware later this year? And who's battling for one of those top six spots? Certainly Sydney United looking... Add to this lead, Bailey Rule was on the score sheet last weekend. Strike only deflecting off Nick O'Brien behind for a Sydney United corner. Matt, Matt Hatch is making his way over slowly to take. Still nothing decided here. You feel could flip on a moment of inspiration or a mistake, certainly. Seen a couple of those this afternoon, late to goals. Could Matt Hatch's delivery be the telling factor here? I'm not sure about Sydney United here. They're trying to crowd around Prendergast, who seems to have got the front spot. Or has he? Lockie Campbell having to get in the way of that chance for Anselmi. Well, that's not what Jake Rose saw. So it comes straight off Anselmi and out for a goal kick.
Shouts coming from a, a restless crowd here at Landon Stadium. Well, the importance of the afternoon in terms of their position on the table. Mark Crittenden was so disappointed with his side's start to last season before a, a terrific run in the second half where they went 15 or 16 games unbeaten off the top of my head. Managed to secure a, a third straight finish, a second straight finish of third place on the Premiership table. And Berry coming through the back of the Oliveira and collapsed in a heap. Certainly felt the impact from his former teammate, former championship winning teammates, of course, back in 2022. Weissel, it's up, looking to find Lacalandre. Managed to do that despite slipping as he struck that ball. Lacalandre just able to glide past Lynch and meeting Adam Berry, who was a crossing cover. And just getting an added inch of physicality to it as it's worn on. Ten City have played a couple of those encounters so far this season. I remember doing a game earlier at Cromer Park. Turned into a battle royale at one stage. Football's been the great thing this afternoon. Jack O'Brien was in behind but hadn't timed his run. Matt Harris, the assistant on the far side, just waiting a moment to make sure it was he who was going to take control of that ball. Groans from this crowd again. It's a beautiful ball from Adam Berry to find him, just not timed quite to perfection. Jack Rose aware of United's want to just slow the game down with this 2-1 lead in the late stages. Back at Anakoski. Well, he might have used an arm to flick that one forward. He did. It was missed by the officials. Throw goes Sydney United's way. Whether they saw it and maybe that arm was inadvertent. Either way, Sydney United able to continue getting forwards. There's a searching cross from Lacalandra. Nakamura was the man it was trying to find. Prendergast got there ahead of him. Trying to release Adam Berry and get Blacktown City going forward quickly. Major. Assessed his options. There weren't too many ahead of him that were easy to find. Squares it up for Nick O'Brien. Just left that one a yard short. Throw in nonetheless for Blacktown. Still leading at the Illinden Sports Centre late in that game with Northwest Sydney Spirit. Still by a score on a three goals to one. Adam Berry forward. Looking for Bernie. He timed his run. His header wasn't as well weighted as the ball that found him. Kalatz has been busy in this second half but hasn't had to do anything spectacular. The best chance of the half could fall into Joey Gibbs who couldn't make contact with Jack O'Brien's cross. Just a yard or two out from goal. Any touch would have done. He couldn't find it. And so the search goes on for Blacktown. Sydney United's changes just seem to have settled them a little. That ball forward from Rule is what he'd like to have back. Well read by Lynch. Adam Berry now. For Nick O'Brien. Bernie who's been tireless down the right making another slower run forward. Malia, who does have fresher legs. And the pass wasn't befitting a player of his quality, though. No subs coming in the heat. Here is Blacktown continue to search for the goal that might find them a point. Most of those is going to be Ruben or Atife who's striding on now. He found a late equaliser for Blacktown City in that game against Manly United, which I mentioned just a moment ago. Got a couple of goals this season off the bench for Mark Crittenden. Double substitution. The other change is Jacob Maniti. He's going to come in and just try and give them a little bit more ball playing ability through.
through midfield. Joey Gibbs has been removed. Afternoon. He'll rather forget. Can Blacktown bail him out with a goal here? They just touch, deflecting off McGing and out for a corner. Time no longer City's friends, but they do have 10 minutes or so to try and find this equaliser. Jack O'Brien over to take another corner. Couldn't beat the first man. Had to stretch to get there and tell me, but he did. Recycling possession through Maniti. Philippines under 23 international. Malia on his left foot. Bakadana Koski reading it well and drawing a touch from Ben Berry. Not the first time he's been pinged for going in late in the opposition penalty area. Another raid seen off by Sydney United. Rule for Lacalandra. Managed to work it out between themselves. The return ball was a difficult one to control for Bailey Rule. 58 FC substitution going off as number 10, Carlos de Oliveira. Carlos de Oliveira has come off as well. Number 7, Jordan Ivancic. End of his afternoon. Ivancic, who taken some of the flack for Sydney United's performances in the early season. Put in a very impressive display off the bench last weekend against Sutherland. They're looking for more of that sort of impact from him in the left wing position as this game wears on with his fresh legs. It's hard to miss in the bright green boots this afternoon as well. Youngster made the switch across in the off season from the Bulls Academy. And in terms of the personal battle as well between these two, it will be a first win for Zelko Kalats coaching against Mark Crittenden. After losing both the counters between his bull sides when he was coaching Ivancic. And Blacktown City. Still a bit to see off yet though. Plenty of football to be played here at Landed Stadium. On oh, Major just getting his pass horribly wrong there. Now having to chase back in defence because Nakamura's released Lacalandra. He's got plenty of pace and he's strode, strode away from Manitzi here. Goes for goal himself. Now the question is, did Prendergast get a touch? The ball's gone over the sideline in any case. So it won't be a corner, just a throw for Blacktown City. And you can credit, oh, for Sydney United rather, and you can credit Prendergast with the save. One that might have been travelling wide, but he had to be sure. with every restart that Sydney United have in their favour now. They'll take their time over it. Fourth straight victory after that heavy defeat by Sydney Olympic a month ago. Firmly in their sights. Vancic not able to keep that one in play. Goal kick. Shunta Nakamura's second half goal. Less than a minute into this second half, the difference Sunday, at the moment. Sunday, round nine action up against Sydney FC. Three o'clock kickoff Sunday, the seventh of April. On behalf of the board of Blacktown City, a big thank you to everyone for your attendance today. Enjoy the rest of your Easter break. Look forward to seeing you again next Bernie Sunday. Bernie Formalia. He'll look to duck in on his left. He's got plenty of space in which to do that. Spins back, finds Jack O'Brien. Now Bernie. He makes an underlapping run, but once again, Jack O'Brien not able to measure the pass. All the Blackdown City bench up on their feet now. Trying to urge their team on. Haven't been able to force a meaningful save out of Oliver Kalatz in this second half. Joey Gibbs, the best chance. She wasn't able to turn home, wasn't able to get a touch on from Jack O'Brien's promising cross. Tell me, completely unmarked to nod that goal kick down. It's been a bit of consternation about the defensive effort of Blacktown City, which is not something you say about them too often. On review, though, I think both the goals were a little soft in 
the way they gave them up. Still time to save the result here, though. Marley has looked good since his introduction. He's striding forward again. Wasselitzer across in cover. Another Blacktown City corner. It's a delivery that's been lacking from these sort of situations this afternoon. Certainly in Arua Tife, there's a, another tall figure at which to aim. Ben Berry's forward from the back, as is Lynch. He's in towards the trio of them. Yeah, he felt he was dragged down. And his shot was into a forest of Sydney United bodies. Then he lobs it back over the top. There's not really a willing runner. And Kalats is just able to claim and fall on the football. Calandra, who did very well to make something of that, chasing down the lost cause and winning his side the throw. So, cheers from the few but hearty Sydney United supporters in the crowd this afternoon. And so they'll take every second they're allowed over getting this ball back in play. Bailey ruled Tyler's again at right full back this afternoon. So take this one. Certainly not committing too many forwards. Tell me using his body smartly again. Holding off Maniti. Looking for Ivancic. His full back was searching for rule. Eventually found him, but the only touch he had was to put it to the advantage of Major. Managed to make it work. And a beautifully timed ball for Maya. Lacalandra, rule again. Oh, and Tarek Myers in a shooting position here for Sydney United. Opted to square it instead. And Tilmy held up. Ivancic and Hatch. And well read by Lockie Campbell to win the ball back for Blacktown City. Hasn't been his best afternoon, but that was a key win there. And there's numbers forward here for Blacktown City. A loose touch from Mitch Marley, or of all people. Many attacks breaking down before they begin for Blacktown City in these dying moments. Oh, Atife, a willing runner with his fresh legs. It's a one-man job and he's not able to reel it in. Lacalandra. Has Lynch on his heels, but he did very well, the Futsal Roo, just to watch the ball out of play. Did himself an injury there as well as he tried to get it back to Prendergast with urgency. Game that was full of free flowing attacking football through the middle period of it after a slow start. It turned into very much a job for Blacktown City to try and break down City United 58. They've not managed to do it in this second half. Burning. Malia. Getting on his left foot, but it was Shunta Nakamura all the way back there. His goal the difference at the moment. Campbell for Berry. Lynch. Not too much black in front of him, but it's a clever piece of work to beat like Alandra. The younger legs outsmarted by the older head. Major knocks it down. Back for Lynch, who stayed forward. And his cross wasn't the best. Kalats flapped at it, though. Thankfully for Sydney United fans, it was to the advantage of Dayan Bakadanakoski. He just put his foot through it. Anywhere but here, the attitude at the moment. And so far up are the Blacktown City players, such as the heat that Prendergast is happy to get it back in himself. Lynch again from left fullback. That's a better cross. Only found McGing though. And he said it was unsure, but it picked out Jack O'Brien. Maniti for Bernie. I've been happy to afford him that space. Can you find a cross to bother them? Not really. Bakadanakoski showing us why. Zelko Kalats has opted for him in this situation. No 
Now it's Jack O'Brien's turn down the right. Again, they can't beat Adrian Vlastel. It's uh, barely been able to all afternoon, and Ivancic just goes flattering into the back of Mitch Marliat. Free kick's gone Blacktown's way. Substitution for Blacktown City. Have we seen all the drama just yet this afternoon? Blacktown readying a sub, but they're going to wait for this free kick to be taken. It's the instruction here from the substitutions. Well, from the bench, rather. For Mark Crittenden. Do you want them to fire it in? Looks as though it's going to be the left-footed option of Mitch Marley at. It's an awkward one for the goalkeeper because he can cross or get a shot in towards that back post. I guess that's exactly what Mitch Marley is going to try and do here. With some sort of pace. That's exactly what he does! He's found Lachlan Campbell! And finally, Blacktown City get their late equaliser. Perfectly weighted from Mitch Malia, who said, I'll have that one. And Lachlan Campbell sneaking in front of his defender to not home. Sydney United were so close to the three points and they've had it snatched off them. Lachlan Campbell. Of time added on, five additional Five minutes. more minutes to try and find a winner here. What a game this has turned into in round eight of the MPL New South Wales men's competition. A game with so much on the line already. And the Blacktown City fans so quiet all afternoon are suddenly up and about. Why wouldn't they be? Can that tell me play the hero again? Hint of an arm in his... Touch the control. Play on for now. Nakamura couldn't do it again, could he? Benitez did very, very well to clear the danger. Poor turnover from Bernie. Hatch with his running power. Looking to get to the byline. Flicks it off Ben Berry. And behind it goes for a corner. Full time at the Illinois Sports Centre. Rockdale have claimed a 3-1 victory there. To keep themselves... Up amongst the Premiership contenders. Winner here will do the same. A draw, not much good for either, really. And Sydney United take their third lead of the afternoon. It's in towards Anselmi. Prendergast punches. Berry. There's a chance for them to get forward here. Bakadanakoski was crude in his challenge, but there'll be an advantage paid here because Ruben Oluwatife is in behind. And he just pondered over his options for a moment too long. Ivancic did well to get back and cause that deliberation. That moment's extra thought costly. But the danger not clear for Sydney United. Berry carrying it forward. Lynch. It's so key in the last 10 minutes as Blacktown have chased this game. Maniti again. Berry. Beautiful cultured right foot of his. It wasn't his best cross though. Nakamura looking to release the tiring legs of Anselmi. Jack O'Brien is faded out of the game in this second half, but that was a good pass for Bernie. It was his goal just before half time that got City back on terms. They're looking to go all the way here. Bernie blocked off by Matt Hatch, who was happy to shield it behind for another goal kick. Now a couple more. The last lot of substitutions for Zelko Kalats and Sydney United. Nakamura's goal will be telling. But it could have been so much more. Adam Zervas introduced. Along with Stefan de Robillard. That's played his trades at Blacktown City. One of a few in the Sydney United team. I mentioned a few times this afternoon. Nakamura, the nine, Patrick Antelmi, place number six, Adam Zervas. And those fresh legs of Zervas for Newcastle Jets Jr. Do something. Well, they've forced Lockie Campbell to dribble the ball out of play. Might have popped a whack in the face for his trouble. Up 
Blacktown City with more defending to do. Poor touch from De Robillard. Left the ball behind. Barry was caught as he tried to turn. Gives Blacktown City a chance to get out of their own half from this free kick. Barry. Certainly with a bit to do. Now just hoists it away. Lost a Not too much pressure around him. That's a commanding win in the center of the park from Manitou, though. Malia. Waited for Major. Gages rule again. Calandra back in half-hearted support and back at Koski having to knock it behind. It's the sort of game that's lent itself to a late winner. Such has been the enthusiasm of both teams in chasing the result. A time for a telling cross from Jack O'Brien. It's right now, and it had Kalats under pressure. Maniti took an extra touch, and then getting across the block was McGing. Another corner. Some half hearted appeals for handball from the Blacktown City players, but they're more worried about getting the ball back in the box again here. Marley has chance to deliver. Another in swinger. Again, Kalats came. That was a more important and more commanding touch. Hatch helped him out. Sydney United felt they should have had the free kick. Time running out for both teams now. Jake Rose has the whistle to his lips. And he brings a very entertaining Easter Sunday clash to a close. Twice the visitors led. Early the goal came from the returning. Carlos de Oliveira Sunday, had a tap in after City Patrick Antelme struck the post. Jack O'Brien got Blacktown City back on terms just South before the break. In less than a minute after the resumption, Shunta Nakamura had Sydney United 58 back ahead. And the late equaliser from Lachlan Campbell means the points are shared here at Landon Stadium. In a terrific clash in the FPL New South Wales men's competition. Both holding firm their position on the table for now. Sydney United 58 go their fourth game unbeaten. Three in a row for Blacktown City without defeat. Ahead of their clash here next weekend against the young Sky Blues of Sydney FC. Been a pleasure bringing you all the action on the Football New South Wales YouTube page this afternoon. Alex Molchanoff signing off from Landon Stadium in round eight of the MPL New South Wales men's. Where it's finished, Blacktown City 2, Sydney United 58 2.